നമസ്കാരം വെൽക്കം ടു ഡേസ് വി ഹാവ് എ പോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് വി ഹാവ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ഹൂം ഐ റെസ്പെക്ട് ഫ്രം ലോങ് ടൈം ആൻഡ് ഐ വാസ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ടു ഗെറ്റ് ഹിം ഇൻ ഇൻ അവർ ചാനൽ ഫോർ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ വെൻ ഹി കെയിം മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ ടൈം ടു കേരള ബട്ട് ഫൈനലി ഐ തിങ്ക് ആഫ്റ്റർ ടു ത്രീ ഇയേഴ്സ് ഐ ആം ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ടു ടോക്ക് ടു യു and uh, ashish sir ashish swamiya uh, his experience is uh, 20 plus years in stock market uh, he was in uh, icici as a retail head then move into uh, motilal as well uh, uh, amc there and uh, i think eight eight odd years and years, uh, i used to read your uh, newsletter those days and uh, gained a lot of respect and i learned a lot um, Thank a, you. initial stage of my working life <laughs> then now white talk um, the reason why i got to know white talk is because you moved to white talk <laughs> thank you thank you thanks for inviting me and uh, thanks for following thank yeah you. yeah thank you thank thanks for enlightening us with your knowledge sharing being in media and uh, doing all these things and this kind of activity might be taken inspiration from you know people like you to do this uh, oh, it's a initiative. great thing to you know uh, speak to people and you know pick their brains and we learn in the process you know when we uh, talk yeah very good very really. so sir uh, if you can uh, really um, introduce you clearly you and why talk mm-hmm. um, from there we can take this uh, conversation <coughs> forward yeah so you know about me in fact uh, it's nice that you know you invited me thank you thank you very much um, it's a landmark time frame for me because uh, may 2024 is when i actually finished 25 years in the industry because in 1999 okay. uh, you mentioned icici in 1999 i was a trainee okay. uh, in icici uh, so by qualification i am you know how i got into icici in 1999 as a trainee was because i was studying masters in finance in mumbai uh, narsi mohan you know, nmms mm-hmm. uh, i was studying finance uh, so you know i am a gujarati uh belong to rajkot but i've never lived there okay i'm born and brought up in mumbai oh okay uh, that way i thought uh, some kurgi connection somaya <laughs> yes so <laughs> somayas can be kurgis of course uh, somaya can be gujarati oh, okay. and somaya can be a kachi also oh okay, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah so uh, yeah so i'm not from this part of <laughs> no, no. Uh, india uh, but born and brought up in mumbai okay and you know uh, by qualification i am an engineer so i studied uh, chemical engineering and you know specialized in polymer science i worked in a factory as a production engineer not for long maybe a year year and a half but at the time when i did engineering they used to pay engineers very very badly so <laughs> uh, and plus you know of course i wanted to study more so after a bit of stint as a production engineer i joined like i said nmims okay uh, in 99 i was a trainee in the year 2000 i got a pre-placement offer and joined uh, icici okay, okay. that time it was called prudential icici mutual fund now of course it's a leading fund house okay icici prudential mutual fund so I worked there through multiple roles so like you described in 2012 i was uh, head of retail business which means you know retail business meaning sales distribution products and you know multiple other functions uh, so 2012 and i quit icici and i joined motilal oswal as the managing director for their asset management company i worked there for just under about 8 years and end of 2020 i quit motilal oswal and i joined uh, white oak capital as the uh, ceo okay so that's about my professional journey but you know telling you about white oak it's a interesting thing you know i meet a lot of people who say that they don't know the name of the they don't know much about the company and you know as a mutual fund people don't know about white oak there is there's there's a positive thing and the not so positive not so positive is people don't know <laughs> <laughs> the positive thing of it the reason why people don't know is something which is interesting that typically in our industry what happens is that when a mutual fund comes people already know the name because all mutual funds in india they are owned by some bank. you know like a broking company or a yeah. fintech company nowadays or a bank insurance company home finance company so what happens all the mutual funds they are part of some conglomerate so there is a conglomerate for 5 10 15 30 40 years and then one fine day they launch a mutual fund so people already know the name in case of white oak they don't know the name because it's purely a professional fund management company in fact when white oak got the license uh, lesser known fact it was amongst the first ones where a professional fund manager got a license who's not part of any conglomerate okay because white oak is founded by my colleague his name is prashant khemka he founded white oak in 2017 and before that for 17 years prashant worked with goldman sachs uh, so he is a unique professional he's managed money in us india he's been cio for emerging markets for goldman sachs uh, 
सो टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एंड यू नो नाव एज वी मैनेज एज वी स्पीक वी आर ओवर एट बिलियन डॉलर ऑफ एसेट आई मीन लेसर नोन फैक्ट इज दैट वाइट ओक इज वन ऑफ द लार्ज एफ आई आई इन्वेस्टर्स इन्वेस्टिंग इन टू इंडिया सो इन इंडिया यू नो पी एम एस ए आई एफ म्यूचुअल फंड वी मैनेज अबाउट से ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड क्रोर्स बट ग्लोबल मनी इन्वेस्टेड इन टू इंडिया यू नो सोवर इन फंड्स पेंशन फंड्स एंडाउमेंट्स रिच पीपल इन स्विट्जरलैंड यू के यूरोप मिडल ईस्ट सो एज ए एफ आई एफ और फॉरनर्स वी मैनेज नियरली सिक्स बिलियन डॉलर सिक्स बिलियन ओके So it's a so large which means form. all put together seventy plus seventy thousand. Yeah, yeah. Access. All put together between uh, say all put together well over eight billion dollars. Okay, okay. Eight and eight and a half billion dollars. So that would be yeah uh, maybe seventy thousand crore. Seventy thousand crore. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very large team. In fact, there are more than three hundred people in the firm. We have offices, of course, in India. Then in uh, gift city Singapore, Madrid, Dubai, UK, Switzerland. Multiple places, Singapore, of course. Okay, I think you have a research team which is a, a very well diversified. And uh, another thing is that I think you have a research in small companies, which uh, I yes. think that is yeah. where, that is where yeah, your yeah. expertise lies, right? Yeah. So typically, you know, when you meet an asset management company, they would have twenty twenty analysts or maybe fifteen analysts, but their coverage would be three hundred, four hundred companies. We have just for India. I mean, of course, we manage global emerging markets also, so that would increase the team size. But if I just say India, it is about thirty-two people, okay. which cover nearly seven fifty uh, okay. companies. So for us, you know, we don't have any restricted universe. Everything about thousand crores of market capitalization is part of the universe. Okay. Okay. And then those companies are rated one, two, three, four, five, depending on their business characteristics and governance and those things. So the coverage is very large. I mean, often times, you know, some two thousand crore company gets listed, and we might be an anchor investor or something. Oh, It's very okay. normal. Okay. And and uh, sir, uh, you are uh, working with. Uh, Foreign institutions, and you yes. are you are one reason to bringing a lot of money to India. Yes, and we have a, a lot of uh, questions that why you should invest in India. Huh. Uh, so, what is your answer for uh, yeah. why you should invest in India? So, I'm sure you know. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. in this part of India, there are a lot of non-resident Indians, yeah. right? And they would definitely ask expert like you that type of question. See, what happens is that, and you know, for people who are not living in India. right non resident indians they can be kind of global investors mm-hmm. because the whole world is available to them but you know if you ask me very quickly two three reasons why people should invest in india and more than non resident indians indians will learn few lessons out of this if i tell you mm-hmm. do you know there are few things which take for granted so nikhil you must have seen many times we make a chart that you know in the long term the gdp growth results in growth of corporate profits and when corporate profits grow of course the stock market and the index will also grow that is a logical yeah do you know that in lot of countries this logic doesn't work uh-huh. correct right meaning that you think logically that for economic growth to translate into profitability for companies there are certain things which we are just assuming or taking for granted because all economic growth doesn't result in profit for corporate okay. what if your corporate sector is enter psu mm-hmm. right what if the governance practices or the law of the land is such that economy is growing but you know more of it is par- parallel economy okay. more of it is informal economy or you know unorganized yeah. or public sector right mm-hmm. so for economic growth to translate into profitability for corporates you need a c- certain construct of the economy correct like case in point is china in china economic yeah. growth is well known it has not resulted yeah. in corporate, corporate profit yeah, growth yeah. or stock market growth right now for corporate profit growth to result in stock market and to come into your and my mutual fund statement see companies can make profit but how will it come to nav of your and my fund yeah that for that you need fabulous institutions like sebi you need a mutual fund industry you need exchange you need clearing system you need demat accounts that whole system and the judiciary everything has to function right otherwise companies can make profit but yeah. uh, you know the corporate governance practices uh, the legal frameworks uh, the regulatory framework in certain countries so bad that companies make profit but shareholder don't make money yeah. so the prime reason to invest in india is that we have a functioning system where economic growth translates into profitability for companies we have a thriving private sector of listed companies so economic growth translates into profitability for companies and there is a thriving mechanism or framework whereby corporate profitability translates into your mutual fund nav also so that is one prime reason and the second is of course it's the largest and fastest see every time we are said there is a fastest growing economy in the world 8% but if you are 100 billion gdp 
नो वन केयर्स यू ग्रो एट परसेंट और एटीन परसेंट द फन इज इफ यू आर फोर ट्रिलियन डॉलर एंड ग्रोइंग एट परसेंट बिकॉज इफ यू आर फोर ट्रिलियन डॉलर एंड ग्रोइंग एट परसेंट देन यूर एन्युअल आउटपुट इंक्रीमेंटली इज थ्री हंड्रेड बिलियन प्लस पाकिस्तान जी डी पी इज टू सेवेंटी फाइव बिलियन सो वी आर एडिंग वन जाइजेंटिक कंट्री इंक्रीमेंटली एवरी राइट सो द पॉइंट इज दैट यू नो ग्रोथ इन इट सेल्फ इज नॉट इनफ ग्रोथ इज रेलिवेंट ओनली इफ एट कम्स एट स्केल एंड टूडे देर आर नो कंट्रीज विच आर फोर ट्रिलियन ग्रोइंग एट परसेंट सो दिस इज द ऑब्वियस रीजन टू दैट्स अ ब्यूटी सो दैट रियल कॉम्पाउंडिंग इफेक्ट इज रियली हैपनिंग फ्रॉम हियर ऑन वर्ड येस ऑफकोर्स सी इवन इफ यू फॉलो ऑटोमोबिल्स यू नो दैट ऑटोमोबिल्स यू नो यू कैन हैव अ हंड्रेड टन ट्रक और यू कैन हैव अ फेरारी बट यू डोंट हैव हंड्रेड टन ट्रक्स गोइंग एट टू हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स पर आवर दैट इज करेक्ट दैट इज क्रेजी राइट बट इन इकोनॉमिक टर्म्स दैट इज हाउ दिस इज फोर ट्रिलियन ग्रोइंग एट एट परसेंट इज ए मनी स्पिनर बिकॉज your annual output is 320 billion incrementally which means correct. just imagine your economy is this year 4 trillion next year it is say 4.4 trillion correct to incrementally produce 300 4 billion 100 billion of output imagine how many jobs will be created hmm. how much tax government will collect how much steel energy power how many people will be capable to buy an apple phone correct. right how many cars will be bought i mean isn't it great that hyundai which is a south korean company is finally going to list in india is just saying that so, as an example what yeah, does that yeah. say yeah there, there is a big opportunity and the thing, i think the good reason is that there are a lot of people they have a doubt they are nervous and mm-hmm. there is a possibility that they are migrating to some other country mm-hmm. and the coming back is they are doubtful so they have this question very clearly that why should i come and invest in india see i i would put it this way look uh, this is somewhere it is it could be i'm mm-hmm. guessing mm-hmm. Uh, and in my my own family mm-hmm. uh, my brother in law my sister they are non resident indians they are in america for example you know my brother is a technology guy so he is in america so i'm just saying this with full understanding but you know look at it this way that your decision to migrate out of india for better career prospects at a particular point in time right is a different thing versus your decision to make a investment mm-hmm. see if i if i decide to invest in a stock market or in real estate or in bonds or anywhere 25 years back i may have made a career choice that i will work in india in india stock market does it mean i should not invest in america's stock market correct it they, yeah. those two decisions are mutually yeah. exclusive from each other so same way if you are a non resident indian who left india 20 years back or 10 years back for your career prospects that decision is fine that you did for your career mm-hmm. but then when you are looking to invest and it is well known fact that amongst all the investment destinations globally one of the preferred ones is india india then that decision you should keep <laughs> i think, I, think I, i i'm just curious because since you, i i got you i think you need to add along with that uh, dollar appreciation this is another doubt people have so now let's clear one and i'll send you this data you uh. can share it with your listeners <laughs> you can put it in the captions it is a this is uh, unambiguous data mm. if you take all the stock markets in the world starting with america right at the top mm. so america then european markets like uk france germany then you take asian markets like japan then you take china you take emerging markets like india brazil thailand put all of them you stack up all of them so nikhil what you will realize is that in 5 years 15 years long time frames globally the best performing stock market in terms of returns generated in dollar terms is america mm-hmm. you know which is the second best performing market after america in dollar terms mm-hmm. it is india yeah, okay so i am so i'm clarifying the doubt that in us dollar terms mm-hmm. india is the world's second best performing stock market in last 15 years okay, okay. this is public data yeah, public, okay. information yeah. and which automatically means because stressed on the point dollar terms which means that after paying for some 3 4 5 percent of rupee depreciation annually mm. we have actually outperformed china okay. japan europe all other emerging markets we have outperformed okay okay good good and i think you know still uh, we have a mutual fund as a uh, publicly everyone now it's a favorite yes. a lot of advertisement a lot of effort from many people are yes. uh, talking about mutual fund but uh, still what is that uh, according to you that still you think that uh, this information also should people know 
what is that my myth around uh, mutual, mutual fund funds. and uh, same time because everyone think that i know mutual fund hmm. and uh, because these days uh, opening an account is a very simple thing and yeah. choosing a fund is like a, everyone know that you know click one so, and yeah. invest yeah so, so i'll tell you this way you know because you know in your question you mentioned about choosing a mutual fund so mutual fund everybody knows hmm. right and for investing in stock market especially it's a preferred uh, vehicle now you know one thing myth or whichever way you look at it which i'll be useful for your listeners generally i have seen that people have the tendency to buy something which has done well in last one year or last three years hmm. right so one myth buster or eye opener for mutual funds is that you must you make use of last one year and last three year data you must make use of it not to identify which fund to invest in to identify which fund not to invest in because <laughs> the long history suggests that winners will rotate mm-hmm. okay right because what the history suggest is that you are not supposed to look for the best fund you are supposed to look for the consistent fund but people have a tendency to look for the best so what history says is that if you take the best fund of last 3 years mm-hmm. the probability that it will be the best fund in the subsequent 3 years is not even 25 30% mm. it's less than 1 in 4 chance that it will turn out to be the best equally true if you take the worst performer of last 3 years there is no guarantee it will be the best performer of next 3 years so the lesson is don't look for the best the lesson is look for the above average or the consistent look for somebody who is consistently aiming for the above average don't look for someone who is aiming to be number 1 number because one. the guy who is number 1 see today the point in time we are talking today who is number 1 the guy whose value mm. cyclical small cap defense railway anything when macro economics change you know when some government policy some geopolitical war some change in interest rate everything which is working will stop working and something which was not working will start working mm-hmm. so people who are today number 1 are number 1 because they happen to be in the spaces of the market which are flying and the people who are down in the dumps they happen to be in the spaces which are just not working you need somebody who straddles okay. the broad market and aims to be above average because the guy who is number 1 will definitely be number 20 and the guy who is number 20 will definitely get resurrected like a phoenix at some point in time but both are going to give you jannat and jahannam <laughs> you, you need to bring that consistency again yeah, you don't we are we have to be human we have to be on earth <laughs> no, sir this yeah. is the biggest thing now the situation is very simple right everyone uh, chasing behind the funds which is highest performing so yes. defense is one thing uh, forget yeah. about uh, sectoral fund and everything but yeah. small cap is and the mid cap is something which is uh, i think uh, they were they, so they want people less risk but uh, uh, minimum return of 25 percentage or 20 percentage <laughs> that is what uh, mm. expectation has come now yeah. and everyone want to those who has in invest they want to really come and invest in, yeah. and when we look at these kind of a situation in fund i can really sometimes when when i see the portfolio of people i know that when they started because when they started means in that year which fund was performing better that will be correct, their portfolio correct correct absolutely <laughs> so, good so, point so you know that uh, if if you see digital fund you know when they started by yeah yeah 21 <laughs> so, so this is a situation so when we look at it any it could be sip it could be mutual fund what is that uh, kind of a portfolio allocation or what is that importance to have a different funds hmm. in the portfolio because there are people who have a different fund if i look at it there will be people who have a, a different fund a small cap from one fund a small cap from another fund small cap from another uh, amc hmm. so that is a allo- uh, diversification people are doing now uh-huh. so what is the importance of having an allocation what is the importance of how uh, different category of allocation should be in the portfolio if you can enlighten that will be good see i think you know what is happening is that investors need to understand one thing that uh, say today like you rightly pointed out if somebody starts investing today they are most likely to have small cap fund in the portfolio or defense fund in the portfolio or a value or contra or cyclical fund in the portfolio if they start today mm-hmm. correct and if they start today they are unlikely to have private sector banks least likely to have digital or technology correct but like i said in the earlier point the key thing is that rotation is the order of the day there are three words related to stock market people should remember one is it is cyclical mm-hmm. second is it is mean reverting mm. and the third is that it is based on relative valuation meaning that 
in the market it's a continuous process that something which is relatively cheaper will eventually find buyers and something which gets expensive at some point in time will blow out and people will want to exit out of it like you know when we were kids we were doing these experiments you know in physics class saying that water finds its own level you know you have multiple tubes you pour water in one tube ultimately all the tubes will settle at the mm-hmm. uh, same mm-hmm. level right if you try to tilt it right one thing will go higher another thing will come down but ultimately it will again you know you tilt the whole yeah. apparatus but yeah. the water will still be finding its level correct so what people should keep in mind is that if you just buy what has done well in last one year correct then it is set for uh, you know it is set to revert back to its average in mm-hmm. future and something which is today below average will again find its right or fair uh, you know status or valuation now when you buy what has done well in the last one year and you buy the same thing from three different fund houses that is not diversification the real diversification will be that when you pick something and you say wow this has performed so well you need to first understand why it has performed so well mm-hmm. correct like say if i tell you that you know you know in the last season uh, in the last season virender sehwag just did mind blowing performance you will say that okay then he should be the top pick in the team but you know that on certain kind of wickets that type of batting obviously he will be number 1 correct uh, on certain type of pitches there will be somebody else like cheteshwar pujara mm-hmm. he'll be number 1 but why you go for rahul dravid right because irrespective of the pitch you want that consistency, consistency. Yeah. correct if the pitch is too good he'll make 100 if the pitch is bad he'll still have 40 mm-hmm. correct so that is the whole thing that diversification comes from different types of players or diversification comes from different types of funds not by buying same type of fund from three different fund houses because you know they all will swim or say, if you buy three different small cap funds how much of the performance is just because small cap is in vogue mm. and how much of the performance is because that guy has done outstanding stock picking within the small cap space so what you will find is that bulk of the performance is because the whole small cap space is in vogue and there is not much differentiation between the stock picking you know right like today for example if private sector banks are not doing well what is the difference between hdfc bank and axis bank and kotak bank you know there might be difference in degrees matlab minor difference the entire difference is whether you own psu or you own private correct so the point is that difference the diversification will come from owning different styles or owning different ways of managing money not by having the same thing from three different providers yeah, yeah. that's the point thanks thank you so much sir uh, for uh, taking out uh, you know uh, for our audience to share your knowledge oh it's and my pleasure if you know if it helps anybody i'm glad thank you thank yeah, you yeah just to, just to add that this is uh, for me it's a big uh, fanboy moment with you uh, oh no no it's my pleasure <laughs> thank you for inviting yeah, thank me thank you thank you thank you thank you and uh, you know i'm sure that uh, people will enjoy this thank, thank you thank you all the best